Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Adult Education Family Literacy Week, Flood the Hill, live in our nation's capital. Yeah, I was a little off guard because I was jamming. I felt so upbeat with that music. And everyone here in the studio is just like bobbing their heads. And it's just a feel-good vibe. It, it really does set the tone um, for this week. It's just a feel-good week, doing great work um, to spread the message about adult education and family literacy. I am Shikata Thomas. I'm the president of COABE, and I am thrilled to have have you join us today. If you missed this morning's Rise and Shine podcast that you saw in the video, be sure to catch up on our YouTube channel. This morning's session was great. It included guests such as Vicki Green from GEDTS, as well as Michelle Gilliard from IBM Skills Build, and so much more. So our Rise and Shine podcast is held every morning during AEFL week at 8 a.m. with your host, Jeff Abramowitz offering valuable insights and updates. Um, so we're here just to have just a, a fantabulous week to spread the message, as I said before. It's the vital time for highlighting the significance of adult education and the remarkable impact it has in all of our communities. Adult Education and Family Literacy Week serves as a powerful reminder of the dedication and progress in helping adults around our great nation acquire essential skills and knowledge for advancement and achieving their goal and economic stability. Today, I am joined with very special people, um, our CEO, Sharon Bonney, and the Assistant Superintendent of Octay, Dr. Amy Lloyd, as well as my good friend, Latoya Newsom. Their expertise and perspectives will offer invaluable insights into the current landscape of adult education and the ongoing efforts to support our and enhance our collective works. So thank you so much, Sharon, and thank you ladies for being here with us today. Thank you so much, Shikata. What a pleasure to be with you all. I am super excited to introduce our true guests and our experts here who you all are waiting for, and that's Dr. Amy Lloyd and Latoya, Latoya Newsom. So I'm going to turn this over to them to join us. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Cache, buenos dias. Happy Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. I am so excited for this week. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Shaketa, for the kind introductions. Uh, future's so bright, I've got to wear my adult education family literacy shades. Uh, and so grateful, first and foremost, to all of you who are tuning in for the great work that you do every single day on behalf of our learners, on behalf of our communities. I honestly believe there is no more important part of our entire education sector than what we are doing in adult education these days. When we think about the importance of adult education on the people we serve, on their families, on our workforce, on our economy, in our communities, like we really are in many ways creating connections to purpose, to bright futures for over a million Americans who are federally funded, recognizing mm -hmm. that there are many more who we serve through non-federally funded programs. And I think about the many, many more millions of people who we could serve. This is really where the heart is of our education sector right now and where I want to lean in and make sure that we continue to lift up the great work that you're doing and grow the work that you're doing. Uh, I also want to make sure that you see next to me is my incredible co-leader, our division director for adult education. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy AF. E L week. Did I say that right? I messed up the letters. I haven't you had coffee. It. You got it. Did e I? Yes. Perfect. Um, it's so excited to be here with you today. We are uh, just happy. This is an uplifting time for us in our work. We get to celebrate all the great work we've accomplished over the past year, right? Um, some of the things I would love to highlight are some of the year seven advancements we've had, right? We had a 21% increase in our enrollment. 21%. That's we amazing. serve over 1.1 million participants. That's because of the work that you do every single day in the field. We had increased enrollment in every race and ethnicity category with 25% in our Hispanic population. Let's talk about our young people. Oh, our ages yes, 16 to 24, over three, almost 300 thousand youth participants in adult education. Do you know that's like two times what Title I serves? Yeah, let me just double down on that. We serve twice as many young people than the youth Title I programs yes. do. And that just speaks to the power of what we are doing to make sure that we're meeting every learner and their needs where they are and where they want to go. Absolutely. So powerful. Your voices are absolutely amazing. You're advocating, you're recruiting, you're retaining students. And let's talk about the retention piece. 
drum roll, little drums, little drums. Over ha half a million measurable skills gained earned. <laughs> Over half a million. Those are credentials that our students are earning. Those are literacy games. What does that actually mean? That means a student can come in that may be an immigrant and can advocate for themselves in the doctor's office. That may be a grandmother that's raising her grandchildren that can actually help them with that new math. Absolutely. <laughs> new math. New math. Indeed. And that, that's for our incarcerated populations. Individuals are earning their high school equivalencies and high school diplomas and IET credentials. Kudos to everyone in the field for your amazing work, because we are not just changing lives in adult education. We are changing generations and we are dominating in the workforce. We're an essential part of our workforce development system. So I couldn't do it alone. I'm so glad to have an amazing leader that helps us and advocates and champions for this work. So I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, we are all in this together. Absolutely. Thank you so much, You're Latoya. Uh, Latoya is such a joy and her passion for this work is contagious. Uh, I, I do want to lift up a few of our other initiatives that Latoya alluded to. First of all, happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, we are very excited that in this past project year, over half of adult education participants were English learners. So we think about the important role that uh, initiatives such as our Enhancing Access for Refugees and New Americans, known as EARN, uh, provides. But what we are doing in ESL and IELCE across the board is so critical for our learners. And we think about how important it is to ensure that we have the capacity collectively as a field to provide comprehensive services for our immigrants, for our newcomers, uh, to ensure their linguistic, their civic, their educational, their economic integration across the board, to make sure that everyone is welcome in our communities and has the knowledge skills, abilities, and language skills to thrive in our communities. And so I just am very excited to both lift up Hispanic Heritage Month and recognize that we are serving, a uh, majority of our English learners are Hispanic and Spanish speaking. So me alegra mucho. <laughs> <laughs> Por eso. And I, I also think about how I was just a couple weeks ago, in fact, I was just talking about this with some of our colleagues here at COEG in Chicago, and I visited the Polish American Association and recognized how important it is that we are providing comprehensive services for immigrants of all backgrounds through our services. And what they're doing in Chicago is prior to the pandemic, the Polish American Association in Chicago with a large Polish population was serving predominantly Polish people, the Polish community. After the pandemic and after the invasion of Ukraine, much like Poland opened its borders to Ukrainians fleeing the, the incursion and the violence, so too the Polish American Association opened their doors. And I got to be part of listening and learning to from an entire class of uh, Ukrainian immigrants in Chicago, excepting one man from Colombia and one man from Venezuela. So to be clear, it wasn't 100% Ukrainian, but it was 98% Ukrainian taught by a Ukrainian instructor who was really speaking to the power of how important adult education was for transforming all of their opportunities and all of their lives. So I love what we're doing with enhancing access for refugees and new Americans. I love what we're doing in ESL and IELCE. Also want to point to, and I'm sure you all know about things like ITs. We're really excited about expanding integrated education and training opportunities for our adult learners across the board. And we've got this great initiative, Advance IET. This project is building on some IET design camps that we've had over the past couple of years. We've trained over 40 states and territories in this work. We're investing our national leadership activities funds more into this space because we know how important it is to ensure that we're connecting skill building with meaningful economic opportunity. If we really want to lean into education being the, the springboard to economic and social mobility, we need to make sure that we really are supporting all of our learners to be prepared for their futures and to be able to make meaningful choices about who they want to be, where they want to go, and make sure that we're providing those uh, IET opportunities that align their vision and purpose with their next steps on their career trajectories. We also, uh, as all of us in our world are, contending with the ever evolving world of technology and thinking about what it means to be digitally resilient. And I think about our great project around our digital resilience in the American workforce, Straw. Like, what does it mean to integrate digital literacy as a core component of foundational literacy for all of our learners? Frankly, for all of ourselves too. I, with the advent of AI, I keep leaning into this space more and more, thinking, okay. How do I make sure that I stay at my learning edge so that I can support others to do the same? And so when we think about how we need to prepare our educators, 
how we need to like make sure that we ourselves are supporting our learners so that they can continue to engage and be at the leading edge of what our workforce needs. I'm really proud that we are investing in digital resilience for our workers. And then I, I have to highlight, because this past year was so exciting, you probably heard we had a $1 million challenge, the Future Finder Challenge, which is the very first time that the Department of Education has brought the world of ed tech together with the world of adult education and adult learners. How can we reimagine career navigation for our adult learners, use, leveraging technology to provide tools for them to really be able to engage effectively in navigating their futures? And it was such an exciting process. I was so thrilled to learn from all of the finalists and want to congratulate again, the grand prize winner Gladio, which is providing a regional career navigation platform that really provides personalized career opportunities, like just incredible minority owned, women owned, uh, industry, uh, business that is doing great work for our learners. Also want to congratulate WorkBay, all the other finalists for their incredible work too. Uh, and I have learned from these finalists that this competition and all the great coaching and support that they received through it has helped them to continue to de develop their product and bring to scale, bring to our market what our learners need. So I'm just like, again, grateful that we can be part of such a large uh, widespread initiative and effort. And then I, I want to just say we are at this important inflection point where we're now in the wake of the pandemic. We have incredible federal investments from investing in America. So whether it's Chips and Science Act, Inflation Reduction Act, bipartisan infrastructure law, you probably hear these things said again and again if you tune into the news. What does this mean for our learners? All of those major federal investments nearing almost $2 trillion are ultimately connected to workforce development. And when I think about the future of the American workforce, I think about our learners. I think about the 54% of people who are working age adults who read below a sixth grade level. Think about the 43 million who read below a third grade level or the 63 million who are struggling to do basic math. I think about how if we are going to actualize our full potential as an incredible nation, we need every single one of our learners to do the same. And so uh, states have been receiving formula funds from all the Investing in America funds. Some of it has been discretionary, but I, invest, I encourage you to go to invest.gov to take a look at where some of this funding is going and to talk with your state and local workforce boards about how they are considering workforce implications for this funding. Right now, Department of Transportation's at the state level, for example, have a lot of funding that could and should be used for workforce development. How can we build stronger partnerships with our usual suspects, our wonderful partners with whom we always work, and maybe some unusual suspects who might be new to partnering with adult education to think about how we might braid funding and build an even stronger field of opportunities for our learners. So if you need some, some brain power and brainstorming, um, please reach out to me or Latoya. We'd be happy to think through with you how you can you know, connect your state and local providers to these new and emerging workforce opportunities. I also really, my, my heart is so much with our justice impacted population, with our people who, uh, who are incarcerated just last week. I went to a federal bureau of prison, the very first federal bureau of prison, um, federal correctional institute that received a prison education program approval. We are grateful to be ushering in the era of Pell reinstatement for people who are incarcerated, but we know that disproportionately people who are incarcerated need our adult education services before they can even access higher education. And so how do we make sure that we are partnering with state uh, and federal facilities alike, as well as with our jails and local systems to ensure that we are supporting everyone who is justice involved, everyone who is incarcerated, everyone who is coming back home to our communities, because frankly, 95% of people who are incarcerated come back home to us. How do we make sure that we are equitably providing them with high quality educational opportunities? Because we know for far too many of them, disproportionately, our education system has failed them. And so how do we make sure that we rise to the occasion, meet them where they are in facilities, which I know is a challenge, and help them to fulfill their endless potential so that they can then again help our nation fulfill our potential. So I, I encourage you to think about uh, how you can further strengthen and partner with our justice impact populations. And we're doing a lot of TA in this front. We've got uh, IETs for justice impacted people. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please, please let us know. Uh, I could go on and on about how excited I am about what we're doing this week in particular. So 
big efforts underway this week, check out aeflaafla.ed.gov for more information. You all are probably well familiar with our great links website, but I do want to announce we have, as part of the Secretary's Raise the Bar, Lead the World initiative, we have a new adult learner playbook that we're going to be posting. And this has like concrete ideas on how to take your strong adult education programming and connect it to a broader career pathways movement. How do we make sure that you really are thinking about connecting to labor market needs? How are you plugging into the whole array of educational opportunities that connect people to careers and allow them that lifelong economic and social mobility that we're seeking? And so if you have great exemplars that you want included in playbooks like this, these are always going to be a work in progress. We'd love to lift up your great work, but also we have links to great examples of things that we've learned from the field in here, as well as some practical, tactical how-to next steps to engage uh, your adult learners and part of your state's broader career pathways initiatives. We also have a playbook on individuals with disabilities. So recognizing that we want to ensure that we are serving our individuals with disabilities through our adult education services and an English learner playbook. Similarly, recognizing that over half of our learners are English learners. And so thinking about how we lift up the special populations that we serve and make sure that we're providing practical tools and resources so that all of us can lean in and stay at the edge of best practice um, and contribute to growing and strengthening that field. Uh, today, we do have a webinar, an interagency webinar with USCIS, uh, US Customs and Immig Immigration Services. I should know what that stands for. It doesn't roll off the tip of my tongue. Uh, and also our Office of English Language Acquisition here at the department around um, dual language, adult education, citizenship, two-gen strategies, helping uh, parents and their children thrive in educational settings. So if you're interested in uh, what we're doing with USCIS and OELA, because we speak in acronyms, um, please tune into that. And I uh, wanted to note that this fall, the IET and Corrections Project is going to be offering an opportunity for adult education providers to participate in a design camp specifically around correctional education. So lots and lots of things happening every single day. CoAbe is leading a lot of great things. We at the department have a number of things on slate. So please, please stay tuned, stay engaged. Thank you. Elakwa, gracias for your leadership every single day for our learners. Um, thank you, Latoya, Sharon, Shikata, all of you for, for what you do every single day to make a difference in people's lives. We are so grateful to work in partnership with you and so excited for this week. So again, happy adult education and family literacy week. We're in this together. Let's go. Awesome. <laughs> wow. What a, what a wonderful um, sharing of information and resources. And you can see why we think these two ladies are such wonderful leaders. <laughs> So I'm going to close this out here with just a few uh, quick things I want to share with you. This week, we have state advocate fellows from across the country who are coming here to flood the hill. There are 35 individuals representing 16 states. Um, we are excited about that. And we know that there are also virtual meetings and meetings taking place locally all across the country. So I wanted to mention that as of today, there are 98 proclamations that have been submitted. So those are mayors, governors, and members of Congress who have made the proclamation that adult education is important and they have dedicated adult ed and family literacy week for their city, state, or, um, and such as that. So I wanted to also give a shout out to Sarah Quick, our Ohio State Advocate Fellow. She submitted 13 proclamations, which is amazing. Wow. And then 11 proclamations that were submitted by Connecticut uh, State Association case. So our board member there is Kristen Hempel, who's done a phenomenal job, but she also works with uh, Larry Covino, who's their executive director, and Christine Valdez from Middletown Adult Education, who all just do an amazing job there in Connecticut. But those proclamations are continuing to come in. So this is not our final count. We have 98 in so far. We're thinking we're gonna uh, finish closer to 115, which would be a, a new record in the field of adult education. We also um, have on the books meetings with the National Small Business Association, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the CIAW, National Governors Association, and a number of other organizations here while we're in D.C. So we're super excited about that. We are going to be putting what we're doing on the Padlet. We want to encourage you to put what you're doing on our national Padlet. And while you're at it, we also have a social media contest. And so we want to make sure that you are posting on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, X, and Instagram. So for our daily programming, um, this is our kickoff event. And as you know, Shaketa mentioned earlier that we also have podcasts taking place every day. Um, we have over 2,600 signups. I just checked before we got on here live. So we're very excited about that. We're gonna be featuring a number of partners such as 
um, IBM, Skills Build, National Disabilities Institute, NeighborWorks. They work primarily with individuals who are in our covered population, so our learners. Um, Correctional Education, the Barbara Bush Foundation, National Coalition for Literacy, Links, the Department of Labor, Apprenticeships for America, and Correctional Education, just to name a few. So we're very excited about that. There's a lot of great work going on. We also will be featuring NCCER, which is a new, um, newish partner for COE, but it's a National Council on Correction Education and Research. Um, so very excited about that as well. We will have sessions on research, on student leadership, on citizenship and voting, and then we'll also have a Facebook Live with the fellows to close us out on Friday. So I just wanna encourage you to check out the website. There are many, many resources available for local programs, state leaders, individual members, and adult learners. I wanna encourage you to take the pledge and share the pledge for adult education. And also check out the newsletter blurbs and graphics that are ready-made so you can use them at any time. As we close, I would like to thank our fabulous staff who work tirelessly behind the scenes. I wanna thank Lindsay Lord, Bethel Fernandez, Aaron Vibornik, Julie Knack, James Bonney, Michelle Childs, and Tamara D'Ambrosio. They are just awesome. I also want to thank our amazing board who meets every other week with our public policy firm, Penn Hill Group, and our public policy committee, which is led by Jeff Abramowitz, who is our podcast host, as well as Shaketa, Hector, and Jody. Finally, we have four expert presenters in Chicago that are tomorrow, presenting tomorrow on our behalf they're presenting at College and Career Transitions at ACTE's Post-Secondary Summit, hosted by Kristen Hempel, Will Durden, Lori Kirsten Joseph, and Olivia De La Rosa, all of which have participated in our Ability to Benefit Summit that we held a couple of years ago. They are true leaders in the field. So with that, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us. And I want to just encourage you to go out and do great things this week, but make sure you share them back with us. Put them on the Padlet. If you don't know how to use a Padlet, send it to info at coave.org. We'll get them on the Padlet for you. Follow us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Twitter. We have a wonderful contest that's taking place. Um, but we also have a few more words here, I believe, from Shaketa. She's going to close us out, and then we will be on our way. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Sharon. This is just such an amazing session and such a wonderful kickoff, high energy um, that has really lifted me up. And I hope it has lifted you up as well. There is so much going on in the field of adult education, and we have um, so many different learners, right, with diverse needs, coming from different backgrounds. But that's what makes this work beautiful. That's what makes this nation um, beautiful. We're not a melting pot. We're a buffet. And, 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 and there's a little bit of something for everyone. And that's what adult education also has to be, a buffet, a little bit of something for everyone to help you get to your own individual needs to fulfill your appetite so that you can go out there and make an impact not only in your family, but also in your community. And, and that's why I love this work. We were talking about that before um, Latoya and I, just about working in corrections. And I am excited, excited, excited about the IET work that's coming in corrections soon. Um, there was so much information that was shared this morning. And I know something spoke to your heart as it spoke to mine. So make sure you, you keep staying involved, that you keep advocating, keep speaking the different needs that you have as an educator, and also the needs that your students have as learners so that we can make this even better, more impactful. Um, so that I, I always say, I'm trying to work myself out of a job and, and that's what I wanna do, right? And the only way that we can do that is to be able to fulfill the needs of each and every individual. So thank you for joining us today and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.